All right, now that you have a little bit of a background on the process of recycling, let's talk about some of the materials that we do recycle. And we'll start here with plastics. There's more advanced ways to separate and recycle the higher numbers of plastics, but this quick process here that we'll go through, we're, we're mainly talking about our number ones and our number twos, those two plastics that we recycle more so on a large scale. The first thing we need to do is sieve out and sort out the number ones and number twos, and you could do that through sieving, but also there's a new technology out there called optical sorting and this is a new technique where they use light and the transparency of the material with number ones being more transparent and the number twos being more translucent you can use light and separate the two types of plastics so through that optical sorting process and then you have a little manual checking on that back end there we send off those two types of plastics to be grinded down all right so now you have your pet ground down to fine little flakes and you have your high density polyethylene uh, ground down to fine little flakes. We send them off to be washed and decontaminated and then we're going to get them into separate piles where they are stored until they're ready to be put onto a truck and shipped off to be made into new products. Alright, so pretty easy process, um, all made possible by the separation and this new technology of optical sorting. We'll watch a quick video on that, it's, it's a pretty interesting process, the optical sorting. Here are the number one plastics being shredded and piled into these fine flakes, and then they'll be melted down later and turned into pellets. And the process is a little bit more complicated than, than the previous slide, but just know that it goes through the process of being separated, shredded, and then they clean it and decontaminate it, and they're going to produce these pellets, and that pellet is going to be the raw material. And here's a picture of that. In the upper right, the pellets have been dyed blue, so they're ready to go to be made into a blue product. And then in the lower left, you obviously have a clear or a white uh, pellet or flake to be made into a white product. Okay, so pretty quick and easy, a little bit about uh, plastics recycling. Let's take a look at the uh, aluminum can. All right, everything starts with the extraction of bauxite from the earth, and bauxite is the the mineral ore of aluminum. So just remember that when you mine that ore, you need to go through the refining process and smelting to get the raw material separated from the waste rock. All right, and then they're going to make it into what's called an ingot, and an ingot is raw material. It's aluminum that's ready to be processed into a product. So like the pellet for plastic, an ingot is that for aluminum. So then what they're going to do is they'll manufacture it into an aluminum can and we'll use that can. Hopefully you recycle it. It'll get sorted and shredded and remelted and what they can do is they can make it right back into a can. This is a perfect closed loop recycling system and it takes only about 60 days. Very efficient system. In about two months you can make a can, put it on the shelf, use it, recycle it, and make it back into a can from shelf to shelf in about 60 days. Pretty amazing stuff. Here's a picture of cans being recycled. They're coming out of the compactor. All right, ready to be shipped off to reprocessing and to be made into a new product. All right, and then, of course, some people have found other unique uses for aluminum cans. All right, next is paper. We haven't really talked much about paper, but here you go. To recycle paper, it's a very long and labor and energy-intensive process. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the paper and shred it into what's called a pulp. And then that pulp is screened and compressed into flat sheets, which are then cleaned and brightened and the ink is then removed, it's washed, and made back into paper. So it's quite a polluting process with paper. A lot of water is used and involved. Uh, there's bleach to make the paper white, so there's bleach involved. So it's quite a polluting process when it comes to paper. But what's interesting is where our paper goes. Oh, and I got a picture here of uh, this is what the pulp looks like. And in the top left, you know, paper, the virgin material is trees. So when you cut the trees down, the the pulp is actually a, a more of a brown color to what's uh, due to what's called lignin, and that's just pigment in the in the wood itself, the brown pigment. So what they need to do is they need to use bleach to get it to 
the white color. But when you shred, uh, when you go to recycle paper and you shred it, and you take that pulp and you press it into a flat sheet up in the upper right is what it would look like. All right, that's recycled paper. And you see the colors left behind, so what they're going to need to do is bleach that and, and get it back into its white color to be used again. All right, so in the, in the bottom picture there, you see the pulp uh, floating in water, so you can see that you know water is used in this process. All right, and here's a picture of the life cycle, and I put this in here for a reason. What it does is it shows us the difference in processes between making paper out of raw material or the recycling process from paper to paper. If you notice here, paper's raw material starts with trees, all right, and then it's a really energy intensive and destructive process. You have to cut the trees down, you have to debark the trees, you, know, you have to take that wood and chip it up, all right, then you need to refine the raw material and then make it into paper using a paper making machine. And once it's used, let's say you have a newspaper which you um, then recycle. Nevertheless, after collection, it goes to be de inked and washed and cleaned and screened um, and going through the process of recycling. But check this out. So, when you recycle paper, what you're doing is you're eliminating the need to cut down more trees. So, by keeping paper in, in the a closed loop system, you're eliminating the need for all these steps over here, which are very energy intensive and destructive to the environment. All right, so even though that there's a lot of water and and bleaching and the de-inking in the process of recycling paper, it's better than cutting trees down. Okay, so so you can think about it that way. All right, so where does our paper go? Our recycled paper. If you take a look at this pie chart. Most of our paper goes to two different places. Let's start with this chunk that's 33%. 33% of our recycled paper is exported. Okay? And it goes to places like China to be made into things like cereal boxes. And then those cereal boxes are shipped right back over here to be filled with cereals and sold back on the supermarket shelves. So you'll see on the boxes of cereal boxes made from a certain amount of recycled paperboard or post-consumer waste. All right, that's what that means. It was made from recycled paper. So what we do is we'll export our recycled paper to be made into products that we will end up buying back. But take a look at the larger part. 42% of our recycled paper is made into tissue paper. All right, so those are the two places that most of our recycled paper goes. And it's just something that I think you should know. All right, so that's a little bit about plastic recycling, uh, aluminum recycling, and paper recycling, three of the more commonly recycled items. But continuing this discussion, and we'll finish here after these few slides, how much can we save by recycling one ton of material? Remember that when we recycle or we're talking about waste, everything is by weight, all right, and typically the ton. So let's take a look at these couple of materials here and, and think about how much can we save by recycling one ton of material. We'll start with steel. And you'll notice as I go through these couple of materials, there's a lot of benefits to recycling. We're not only saving energy, but we're saving oil. We're saving BTUs of energy, which is heat energy. Uh, we're saving landfill space. You'll see we'll save water. There's tremendous benefits, environmentally speaking, of recycling materials. Not to mention the elimination of a need to mine more materials and all the energy spent and all the environmental destruction that mining leads to. All right, this is direct saving. So let's go through here. And what I want you to pay attention to the most is the BTUs of energy. When manufacturing products, BTUs of energy is very costly. For companies to produce heat energy to make a product, it's very costly. So what companies are interested in is saving BTUs. So to recycle a ton of steel, you're saving 10.9 million BTUs of energy. All right, so keep that number in mind as we move through these other materials. In recycling one ton of plastic, we save 98 million BTUs of energy. Now remember, one ton of recycled plastic is a lot more plastic than a ton of steel. Nevertheless, we're saving 98 million BTUs of energy by recycling one ton of recycled plastic on top of a lot of gallons of oil and a lot of pollutants being released. 
take a look at one ton of glass. We're only saving 714,000 BTUs of energy, much less than the other two materials. And then take a look at aluminum. One ton of aluminum can save 238 million BTUs of energy. All right, that's some real savings. Lastly, with paper, you can save a lot of stuff. Tremendous benefits from recycling paper. Let's look at these results in general. Something that makes sense in looking at the recycling rates of different materials. Remember that metal is number one, and remember that creating BTUs of energy. That's where the expense is. So the more you can save, the less expensive it is. So when we're recycling materials, let's start with steel. By the ton, All right, we save 10.6 million BTUs of energy. All right, per ton. When we look at plastic, we're saving 98 million BTUs of energy. A lot better, but just remember that's a lot more plastic. We take a look at glass, we're saving only 714,000 BTUs of energy. All right, but look at aluminum. 238 million BTUs of energy. Stand back and look here at these two metals. All right, creating BTUs of energy is expensive, so the more you save, the more valuable recycling becomes. So this is where we're saving the BTUs with our metal, 238 million BTUs and 10.6 million BTUs in recycling of steel. So aluminum becomes very valuable. So that's where you get to do a buyback. It's so valuable that companies will buy it back to save money on BTUs. All right, glass only saves 714,000. So all the cost in collecting, sorting, melting, reprocessing glass, it's really not worth that much. All right, so nobody's really trying to recycle glass on the large scale. It doesn't have the value. But aluminum and steel, they have the value. Plastic could have the value, but that's a tremendous amount of plastic to collect and to sort and to reprocess. Remember, there's a lot of cost in the sorting and hand labor for sorting and recycling plastic. So it's very difficult to handle that much plastic. All right, so the two you get the most value from are steel and aluminum. All right, so they are the most recycled. And that's your lesson on the background of recycling.